Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video, we're going to talk about how to determine the rate and rhythm for these following rhythm strips here that we have before you. Okay, these are going to be basically premature atrial contractions. We also call them PACs. So, I kind of want to just give you guys a little kind of info about what PACs are. So, again, you guys know that in the heart, all right, we have this structure here in the right atrium called the SA node, all right? So, this would be our SA node. Then you guys know over here, kind of right around the top of the interventricular septum, you have your AV node, then you have your bundle of Hiss, and then after that we have your right bundle branch and your left bundle branch, right? Now, generally the SA node is the pacemaker of the heart. He sends the action potentials to the AV node, right? And it's at a specific rate, right? So we kind of want it to be every 60, about 60 to 80 beats per minute, and it's a specific rate that it keeps it at. Sometimes, basically, whenever the uh, the this little focus here, this little ectopic focus becomes agitated for some reason. What are some reasons that this little ectopic focus or this little irritated atrial tissue can become such irritated in a way that it starts sending out its own action potentials? Well, these ectopic foci can be triggered by a couple different things. One is hypoxia. So whenever somebody has low oxygen within the blood, and th there can be many reasons for this. It could be because of COPD. It could be because they have pneumonia. It could be because they have some type of pneumothorax. It could be because they have uh, less red blood cells, so they have anemia. There could be a thrombus with going to the pul pulmonary arteries or an embolus. So there's many different reasons that they can have hypoxia, but whenever there is hypoxia, these tissue cells become super agitated and they start sending out action potentials. Okay, and sometimes faster than the SA node, and it beats the SA node before the SA node can get its action potentials to the AV node. These action potentials from this little ectopic focus gets to the AV node quicker. All right, what are some other reasons? It could be due to electrolyte abnormalities. So sometimes in situations where there's changes in potassium, so maybe hypokalemia, it could be due because of uh, someone has excess catecholamines. Okay, so in other words, an increase in your epinephrine or an increase in the noroepinephrine. So these could be certain things as well. And there's other situations. It could be um, other things could be, you know, maybe stimulants. So cocaine, methamphetamine, a lot of these things can basically agitate these atrial cells and trigger them to fire before the SA node fires. Now, because it fires faster, then the SA node, it also is gonna have another thing. So here's one thing I want you to remember. It fires before SA node, okay? And it looks different than SA node's P wave, okay? So whenever the SA node does fire, it has a specific P wave structure. These PACs that are coming from these ectopic foci, they're gonna look different. So let's go to this top EKG here where we're looking at lead to this rhythm strip, okay? And let's kind of do the first thing that we do, rate. How do we determine the rate? Again, you can determine this by, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six seconds uh, on this rhythm strip. You multiply the number of R waves by 10. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight times 10 is going to be 80. So this is moving at about a pace of 80 beats per minute, okay? Next thing we determine, rhythm. So R to R interval. Okay, well this is interesting. Look, this kind of has like a one, two, and about like a half over here. Then it goes one, two, three, four. This is definitely irregular, right guys? So one, two, three, and about a half over here. And again, maybe about a half here. One, two, three. And then again, I go one, two, three, four. This is definitely irregular because then I go one, two. So I definitely have not consistent R to R interval spaces. So this is definitely irregular. Okay. So this is an irregular rhythm. Remember I told you that there's pretty much not that many irregular rhythms. The main one is gonna be AFib. Other ones can be these types of ectopic rhythms like PACs, PVCs, and another one called multifocal atrial tachycardia. So there's not a lot of irregular rhythms. This is one of them.
All right, next thing, we determine our P waves. Are the P waves all the same? Do they look the same? Do you have P waves? All right, well, here's have a P wave. And then look at this one. Remember I told you that if it's an ectopic focus, a PAC coming from the atria, it comes earlier than it should. Okay, let's find a P wave that looks just like this one. I'd say this one, these kind of pretty much look the same. They're definitely the same. This one is definitely different from these two, okay? So because of that, I know that this is a normal one and this is a normal P wave. And this guy right here is definitely an ectopic focus, why? One reason, it comes early. Look at the R to R interval here. It's definitely gonna be a lot sooner. There's a decreased R to R interval. And what did I, what's the other second thing I told you? The P wave looks different. It looks nothing like this first P wave. So definitely, we're gonna call this one a PAC. Let's keep moving down, let's keep ticking away. This is a normal P wave. This one's definitely the same. This one's definitely the same. Again, the same. Oh, there's again another PAC. How do I know? Look at the R to R interval. There's a decreased R to R interval. It came soon, and what else? This P wave right here, it's different. It looks different. There's another PAC. Okay, that's what I want you guys to remember. Basically, PACs are important because you can have them and be completely asymptomatic, but sometimes you actually can have um, palpitations. Now we need to determine P wave, are they there? Yeah, it's there, but you do have some abnormal. So some abnormal P waves, and we've already determined those. Okay, well, what's the next thing? Is there a P for every QRS? Well, here's a P wave, QRS, right? P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS. Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely a P wave for every QRS complex. So yes, there is definitely AV association here. Sweet deal. Next thing, is the QRS complex wide or is it narrow? I can already tell you right now that if I just look at this right here to this right here, that's one and maybe two boxes. That's definitely less than three boxes, three little boxes, I should be specific. So I know that all of these are gonna be narrow. So I know that that means that the actual potentials are moving from the AV node into the bundle branch system and there's no aberrant signaling, okay? All right, sweet. So that's PACs. PACs can cause non-compensatory pauses, which is important when it comes to determining the difference between PACs and PVCs. So remember, PACs, if you just want a little test question note, they do have what's called non-compensatory pauses. We'll get into this in more detail when we talk about the pathophysiology of PACs in another video and how to treat these basically, okay? All right, cool. So we've talked about that PAC. Well, remember I told you that PACs can actually kind of generate a little specific rhythm that you sometimes can see. So let's see if we can find here again, look at this, this second EKG here. We're gonna go ahead and determine rate. Let's count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 times 10 is equal to 120 beats per minute. So it's definitely a little fast. So I'd say that this is definitely a little fast. As you're gonna see here, this is definitely a regular. Let's look why. Look at the R to R interval here and the R to R interval in comparison here. It doesn't take much to see that this is varying. There's definitely a variability between the R to R intervals. So this is definitely irregular. Okay, well I know it's irregular. All right, the next thing I gotta do is look at my P waves. Do I have P waves? All right, well let's look here. Here's a P wave here. I can definitely see that one, that one's clear. Here's another very clear P wave. Another very clear P wave. Another very clear P wave and another very clear P wave. Okay, well what about these QRS complexes here? Where's the P wave? It's kind of like hidden in there. So it's kind of hidden within the structure. It's gonna be a part of this. So basically, you know how you have your ST segment and you're gonna have your T wave? What happens is it looks like this PAC fired just at the end of the T wave and it fused. So this is kind of a P wave and T wave fusion here. And again, you have a normal P wave. This is again, you have your ST segment, T wave. Looks like the P wave from this ectopic focus fired around the same time. So that's gonna be the fusion between the P wave and T wave. And again, you got another P wave, again, another PT fusion, another PT fusion, and another PT fusion. So yeah, obviously I can see P waves in some of them, but some of them are abnormal. So there is 
yes, there is P waves, but there is some abnormal P waves. Okay. That's definitely something that we know. All right. Can I for sure 100% say that this is definitely a PT fusion? No, but I'm pretty darn sure. I'd say I'm about 90 to 100% sure. The reason why is, again, that QRS complex is coming much, much earlier. So what does that mean to me? That means that that P wave from that ectopic focus within the atria fired before it was supposed to, and it fired at the end of repolarization. And again, it kind of is riding on the shoulders of that T wave. All right. Is there a QRS complex for every P wave, even if it's an abnormal P wave? Again, you follow here, it's an abnormal, but yes, there's a QRS complex. Boom, boom. Yes, there's definitely, as I go through each one of these, there's definitely a QRS for every P wave, okay? So yeah, there is AV association here. Definitely AV association. Next thing we had to determine is the QRS complex is wide or narrow. Again, it doesn't take much to kind of just go about right here and about right here and to count the boxes between. I'd say we're about one, maybe two boxes. Again, less than three little boxes. That's definitely a narrow QRS complex. Here's what I want you to kind of see here because this has a specific type of name. Let's find each PAC. We obviously know that they come early. This one's coming early, okay? So here's a PAC. Then again, there's a pause. This, this pause right here, again, this is important. This pause right here between this ectopic focus firing and this normal P wave firing, this right here is the non-compensatory pause. That's important. All right, then we go and we have another PAC firing. Then we have our another non-compensatory pause, another PAC, then we have a non-compensatory pause, okay? And then after that, we have another PAC. Wow, it looks like a PAC is coming every other, right? If I'm, if I'm correct, it looks like a PAC is coming every other normal QRS complex. So if that's the case, it's coming every other. This is called atrial bigeminy. So bigeminy, atrial bigeminy is when a PAC is coming after every normal PQRST complex, okay? So if you look here, here's a PAC, normal. PAC, normal, PAC, normal, PAC, normal, and then again, another PAC, and then again, another normal one and a PAC. So that's pretty that's pretty intelligent, right? That's a PA, that's atrial bigeminy. All right, let's move on to the next one. So we're gonna count off the R waves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, this is a six second rhythm strip, so we multiply the number of R waves by 10. Eight times 10, 80 beats per minute. That's our rate. It's a simple thing, right? Rhythm, are our intervals. Are they coming pretty much the same? No, again, this is definitely a different R to R interval spacing. Yeah, because then you're going short, then you're going long, you're going long, and then you're going short again. So definitely different R to R intervals, obviously, right? So because there's different R to R intervals on this rhythm strip, this is definitely irregular. All right, cool. P wave, we gotta find the P waves. Here's a P wave, P wave, P wave here, 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 P wave here. Do all of these look the same? Absolutely freaking not. This one definitely is gonna look about the same as I'd say this one right here. And then we can say this one kind of looks the same as this one here. This one looks different. These two definitely look different. Then these ones definitely look the same together. And then this one looks different. So my P waves, some of them are normal. They're there. Yes, I do have P waves. But again, some are abnormal. Okay, cool. So I know that. Now, P for every QRS. Yes, because look, I'm going here, P, then I have my QRS complex. P, QRS complex. P wave, QRS complex, P wave, QRS complex. And I can just keep tacking away here. P, QRS complex, P, QRS complex. So yeah, there's definitely an association between the atria and the ventricle. So what that means is, is that even if the SA node is firing, it's going down through your appropriate conduction system. SA node, AV node, bundle of his, right bundle, left bundle, branch, Purkinje. Even if the ectopic focus is firing, it's still going 
at topic focus to, a, to the AV node, bundle, bundle of his, bundle branches per Kinji system. So that's nice. QRS complexes, are they wide or narrow? And again, we can just go here and go to about here and I'm counting the boxes between one, two, less than three little boxes, that's narrow. Again, look at the pattern here. Here's a PAC because how do we determine it? It comes early, then it should be. So compare this one to this one. One definitely comes before two, right? Like much, much, <laughs> obviously one comes before two. But if you know what I'm talking about here, this R wave is definitely coming a lot sooner than it should be, okay? And look at the P wave. The P wave is definitely, these two are definitely different from one another, okay? So PAC, then we go to a normal P wave, okay? Then we go to a normal P wave, because again, look at our R to R intervals, they're the same. They're about the same here. I could count it up, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. They're about the same. But then look, another PAC. It comes early. And look at that P wave. Look how goofy that thing looks. All right? Then I go again, normal R to R interval. Normal R to R interval. And again, I got another PAC. How often are the PACs occurring? It's happening every two. So there's two normal PQRS complexes two normal PQRS complexes and a PAC in between each of those. So that's called atrial trigeminy. So remember that atrial trigeminy. Okay, so basically this is what I want you guys to know about PACs. Not to know all of the pathophys and all of that stuff right now. What I want you to understand is with PACs is how to be able to pick them out. They come early and their P wave looks abnormal. Is there a specific pattern to it? Is there a bigeminy pattern? Is there a trigeminy? Sometimes there could even be a quadrigeminy-like pattern. And again, we'll talk about this in more detail when we have an individual video on PACs talking about their pathophys and causes and, and we'll get into treatment and diagnostics. But again, I want you to remember that the pause between a PAC and going into a normal P wave QRS complex, that is called a non-compensatory pause. That is important to remember because that's usually test question kind of stuff. All right, let's move on to the next EKG rhythm, which is going to be our PVCs.